Welcome back, Wolfpack. Brolis here, and this is how to use Scolipede. Now, I am excited to review Scolipede because it's a very good utility Pokemon, and for some reason, it's a speed boost Pokemon that has 112 base speed. It also got a buff in the sixth generation that it went from 90 base attack to 100 base attack, so it got a little bit more offensive as well, which means this Pokemon's getting some love, and it is very powerful. You've most likely seen a Scolipede as well, that I did it recently on Fan Fridays, showing how easy it is to Baton Bass sleep with it, and that it is just a common Pokemon in general and it can be problematic if you aren't setting up faster than it or you have no way of dealing with it. So looking at its stats, 112 speed, really nice, 100 attack, we already kind of talked about it. That means we also have offensive options that we don't have to directly baton pass anymore. We just go for damage and maybe find some success that way. And then 89 defense, 69 special defense, 60 hit points. Not going to be the tankiest Pokemon, but if we already have our other stats getting boosted anyways, we might be able to make this work out. Look at its typing, it is a bug poison typing. Bug Poison, pretty interesting because I mean flying rock fire psychic weaknesses, but Bug is also going to help us resist ground so it makes it neutral, but we also have a quarter resistance from fighting and grass and then Bug Poison fairy resistances as well. So I mean overall this Pokemon does pretty well, still got to worry about some things, but it's not bad in any stretch. Now, hopping into Pokemon Showdown, the interesting thing about Scolipede is going to be choosing which Baton Pass set you want to run. Do you want to go for pure tank Scolipede? That you can actually run max hit point investment, max special defense investment, and just out tank your opponent, which is what we saw in the Fan Fridays. That by running Iron Defense, if your opponent leads physical, or you bring Scolipede early on in the game, maybe not directly leading with it, you get a little bit of setup in there, or you start your Baton Pass chain with a different Pokemon, you just lead Scolipede, and things get pretty fancy against physical Pokemon. Use Protect. Without any speed investment, then you get up to 390 speed. That means you're outspeeding a whole bunch of Pokemon, even Greninja, so you just use Protect and now you get to set up before your opponent, which means Iron Defense. Now you're doubling your defense before your opponent gets to hit you, and that's just going to go into your next Pokemon. That Iron Defense isn't benefiting you as much as it is your other Pokemon. That you can go for Iron Defense into a Calm Mind Booster. Now they're going to have some kind of way of gaining defenses that they wouldn't have had. I thought about Sylveon, a lot of Fairy type Pokemon, other Calm Mind Boosting Pokemon as well. Some Pokemon they're reliant physically almost exclusively off of Scald, so that is something to consider. Sylveon getting speed boosting as well is also terrifying. So I mean with this, depending on what your goal is for Sylveon, you can maybe max out speed, max out hit points. Uh, you run that Calm Nature maybe, that way you can still boost like a boss. Maybe you put some extra points into defenses since we're already going to be getting enough speed over time. Considering we're going to get 2-3 to three speed boost on Scolipede, worst case scenario is going to be 2, so you can kind of find those outspeeds that you want from there. With this 203 right here, we're going to be able to outspeed 135 base speed Pokemon, so we can find other interesting speed situations, and then whatever we boost into defense is just going to be doubled by the Iron Defense or even more. So say we only get one Iron Defense, you know, we protect Iron Defense, Baton Pass. This is still going to look really nice for Sylveon, because you get Calm Mind. You use Calm Mind, you have Wish, you can also go for Wish Protect, and now you're just going to be unstoppable with that Hyper Voice. If you don't want to be walled out, eh, you don't really need the Protect because you're so tanky and you're outspeeding anyways. So as long as you're really careful on your Wish Play, you can still running, run something like Hidden Power Fire. And now there's really nothing that you have to worry about because you super affect Steel type Pokemon. Hyper Voice is still going to be absurd amounts of damage. And now you're super tanky. And if you're on the field for two turns or something, you're going to be able to get Calm Mind. And then we run the Pixelate ability and that's going to be GG. Leftover works out, but this is going to make your Sylveon or any Calm Mind boosting, any kind of high special defense Pokemon work out really well. Gardevoir is going to be able to run away with this. Mega Gardevoir, give it speed, give it defense, have it boost Calm Mind once and then win the game. That can happen. So that is something to consider. And then we also get access to Swords Dance. So we can just take a Pokemon and make it bulkier. That if you have Pokemon that are really good at eliminating all of your opponent's special attacking threats, so generally a team will have two special attackers and then a lot of physical or some kind of tanky setup. So you just go with Swords Dance. That you use Swords Dance, you go into a physical Pokemon, and then you just bust through everything, and you're not taking any damage from their physical Pokemon because of the Iron Defense. Now what I like here about Citrus Berry is that it just gives you 25% more health. That little bit of extra damage can really matter, that it might buy you an extra turn of Iron Defense, it might get you an extra Swords Dance, and then you're just going to be able to run away with the battle from there. But as I said, Scolipede has a lot of different things that it can do. It can just go for damage, and maybe even also Baton Pass with subs too. So with this, you max out the hit points, you max out the attack. Again, our speed is going to be so ridiculous anyways, and this is going to be more of a lead Scolipede. That what we want to do is we want to go in against a Pokemon that's going to try to status us. 
Going against Pokemon that's going to try to go for setup. If it's setting up Calm Mind, Stealth Rocks, anything that's trying to do for itself, you can just kind of go really free with this. If you can get a free substitute, that could be game changing right there because it buys you that extra turn off Swords Dance, Excisor, or you can just baton pass the substitute. Now the Pokemon that's coming in, it's going to be able to eat that hit for free and still have all of its stats and whatever item and all the scary things that it wants to do. So this is a bit more risky, it, you have, your opponent has to play into your hand a bit, but at the same time they might not expect it. Oh, it's Scolipede, it's going to protect. Free Stealth Rocks for me? No, that's Substitute. Okay, still got the Stealth Rocks up, but Substitute's going to be a lot more effective because now I didn't lose my turn at all by just protecting or anything, and I can Baton Pass that as well. Sword Stance means that we're going to be able to boost our attack and whatnot, and then we can just go for damage. We can use X Scissor, or sometimes you'll see Mega Horn. Higher damage, lower accuracy, but it, if you don't care about the accuracy, it doesn't matter. 15% chance to miss, but you're going to get stabbed, and if you're doing Swords Dance boosting, it gets really scary. And sometimes you'll just see like pure offensive Skullipede. Sometimes you'll even see Life Orb. You want to make sure that damage slams down, and then, okay, I have like 5 hit points left. I'm really, really low. I'll just Baton Pass my Swords Dance into the next Pokemon. I already knocked out one or two Pokemon. Like, I've seen Skullipede sweep on its own. It's a Pokemon that you have to respect. It's either going to set up too hard, or it's going to turn around and kill you, and that's something you do have to respect. And that's going to be very hard because you don't know what it does until it's too late in a lot of situations. So then it can still baton pass, preserve the Swords Dance, and now the next Pokemon's like, okay, I have Swords Dance, I'm gonna get free damage now. Now Scolipede also runs Toxic Spikes, so you can actually become set up that you go for Toxic Spikes, you go for two layers of Toxic Spikes maybe, this is where you can carry the Iron Defense, or you just kind of go whatever Swords Dance into a damaging move. It's not going to be as reliable as just like opening up with Protect so you can get one shot, but if you have Toxic Spikes up and you're poisoning or Toxic Poisoning all of your opponent's Pokemon and you're giving speed to an ally or something, it gets filthy really quick. So that's just extra damage, extra things your opponent has to deal with and you're still getting a lot of damage. So with Swords Dance you can just put Subs to Protect. We can also just put down Iron Defense, that's going to give us opportunities to boost those other kind of Pokemon that just need defense and speed and nothing else. Sometimes a Pokemon can carry its own form of stat boosting, that if it uses its own Swords Dance, you can kind of give it other stats from Scolipede, while also getting that poison set up that your opponent has to worry about. And then there's also all out attacking Scolipede, so instead of giving our stats, we can be greedy and still find KOs. We use Swords Dance once, well that's going to be almost 600 attack, Life Orb is boosting us absurdly, and then we get really good coverage. So we get moves like Earthquake and Facade, so our coverage is going to be really nice. Now if someone sees Scolipede setting up, they might try to burn it, or they might try to get that Baton Pass prediction and burn the Pokemon coming in. So Facade can be good to carry, because if you get burned, Facade ignores the burn drop on attack, so you're just getting 140 power for free if you get burned, and it doesn't completely ruin your strategy. Facade is some nice tech to consider, Earthquake for coverage, Mega Horn for the stab damage, and that's going to be absurd. Now let's think about the implications of speed boosting Baton Pass. So recently I reviewed Regigigas and I mentioned Baton Pass, so Pokemon like this, you know, it needs speed, it needs that attack. Well at least for the first 5 turns in Regigigas' case, that if you survive those 5 turns, game's over. So my idea is we just run Adamant Nature, we go max hit point, max attack investment with Drain Punch. If we get plus 2 on the Sword Stance, plus 2 on the speed boost, maybe even plus 3, now we're going to be a very formidable Pokemon. So here's also where things get interesting, we could find like speed investment. So now we're going to be finding some outspeed before Slow Start wears off. Once our Slow Start wears off, it kind of doesn't matter. So you can either play for the earlier safety or the late game just Havoc by being tankier. And then Drain Punch and other moves. We get moves like Facade, like Return. So we don't get completely shut down. We have Earthquake. We can do all sorts of crazy things with Regigigas. We can even run something like Thunder Wave, which means that we use our Thunder Wave. We stay faster than our opponent. And that just could go into all kinds of craziness. So we outspeed them, we drain punch back up with 460 attack, so start wears off, now we're over 900 attack, and Regigigas just goes off. Step facade, we can also run return. If we have return, then that means we might want to go for the Lumberry, and then we can just play safe and get all those stats boosted. Other Pokemon I was thinking about, Marowak, you know, Thick Club, with that, it doubles its attack already. So attack's getting doubled by Swords Dance and then doubled by Thick Club. All it really needs is that speed. So if we go Jolly Nature, max out the speed. 207, that's doubling to beating out 135 base speed Pokemon. So then we just get the huge amounts of damage from there. Uh, we get moves like Stone Edge, so we run the Stone Edge, we run the Earthquake, and then we can just kind of win. We get Low Kick, and then we can just kind of put in whatever moves we want right here. So it's going to be very powerful on Marowak. But then think about other Pokemon, Garchomp. 
You would throw a life orb guard chomp speed boosting stuff and it's going to win. Like anything can do whatever with speed boosting. So that is why we're going to consider it. And it's just very powerful, very diverse. So let your mind run wild with Scolipede. Now I do feel bad about Scolipede just a bit because of Ninjask. Ninjask used to be the premier bat baton passer, but Scolipede is bulkier, has that iron defense outplay, and just a little bit extra that I can do. So if you guys enjoyed the video, that's how you use Scolipede. I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you for watching.